Welcome to part four of our paid search audit series. As you can guess by the number, we've already released three different videos talking through our paid search audit process. So if you're interested in those, you can check them out right here. But today we want to talk about ad copy strategy. Now, obviously ad copy is very difficult to anonymize. So we're going to be using a lot of made up examples, but our goal is to walk you through the things that we're looking for when we audit an account. Ad copy is very subjective. Some people have very stern opinions one way, other people think something else is fine. When it comes down to it, we just want to make sure that the ads are compelling and that there's some sort of strategy going on. You'd be surprised how many people just throw spaghetti at the wall and hope it's going to stick. So in this video, we're going to walk through our ad copy review for a paid search audit. Okay, we're back in our Google Ads Editor account where I have made up some examples for one of the accounts that we've been using for the last few videos. If you've seen those, it'll seem a little familiar. If you haven't, maybe go check them out. Whenever we're auditing a Google Ads account, specifically ad copy, I like to spend most of my time in Google Ads Editor. Seems to go a lot faster. It's easier to see things at a high level. And if you're clicking from one ad group to another into different campaigns, you don't have to wait for a new page to load. And also we get some nice totals in the menu over on the bottom left hand side. So to get started, I've got just two campaigns that we're going to have active for this example. And let's start with where I always start my ad copy review. And that's to understand how many ad variants they have in place. So personally, I like to open each of the campaigns that we're looking at because I want to see how many ad groups are in here. And then I'm going to come down to the ads portion down here. And the numbers I'm going to be paying attention to are going to be the responsive search ads and expanded text ads section. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But first, let's just highlight over the first ad group that I'm going to look at. And then you can see down here, there are three responsive search ads and zero expanded text ads. So I'm going to click on the responsive search ads. Now I can see that all of them are enabled. So there are going to be three active responsive search ads in this ad group, which is the maximum number of responsive search ads that you can have active. Expanded text ads don't have any, but then I just go through all of the ad groups that we have here. So this ad group doesn't have any ads active. Neither does this one. That one doesn't either. Now we have another that has some ads, but only two of them are active. I usually will sort this just by clicking it the first time to put all of the green variants at the top and the paused variants down below. Now I leave it this way because although you can filter to only see the active variants, I want to know how many variants are in place in the account as a whole. This will help me get an understanding if the account is having ad copy regularly tested or not, because if the account has been around for a couple of months, something like that, and we see two ads that are active, two ads that are paused, that tells me they've probably done some testing. A couple of months isn't a super long time, but if the account and this campaign and ad group specifically have been in here for 10 years and there's only two active ad variants and two paused, probably tells me they're under testing and they have a lot of opportunity for growth there. Now let's keep going through these different ad groups. Again, I'm going to be just hitting the down arrow on these ad groups in the top left hand column and paying attention to the numbers that show up down here on the bottom of the left hand column. So the next ad group has, again, no active ads, same thing, two and two, two and two here as well, two active, one paused, no ads, and that's the end of it. So the first thing right off the bat is that there are a handful of ad groups that don't have any ads active. I would absolutely call this out because you probably want to have those ad groups active if you're trying to advertise toward those keywords. Now, the second thing to note, talked about it briefly, but expanded text ads. This example does not have any expanded text ads active, but here's my little side note about expanded text ads. We're no longer able to create new expanded text ads or edit existing text ads, but they can still run in your campaigns if you have them active. Now expanded text ads, even though they are a deprecated ad format, are not necessarily bad. I have some campaigns that have been running for, again, like I said, like 10 years, something like that, and expanded text ads still perform pretty well. So when we review ad copy, we make note of anywhere that expanded text ads are active. And then the only real check we have is to go into the Google ads account itself, look at the performance in a recent and maybe a slightly longer time frame, and see how they perform compared to the responsive search ads. If they're underperforming, we'll probably suggest that they pause them. But if they're performing pretty similar or even better than responsive search ads, We'll definitely tell them to leave them on. Doesn't hurt to leave them active, especially if they're performing well. So with that out of the way, now let's focus on the responsive search ads. 
So again, I'm going to call out all these ad groups that don't have any responsive search ads active. But then after that, most of the ones in this non-brand campaign, when there were actual active responsive search ads, let's find this one here, we had two and two. Overall, that's fine by me. The only part where I would have an issue with the number of responsive search ads active is if there's only one active in an ad group. That means that Google is only going to show that one responsive search ad, there's not going to be any testing done, and you're down to only the individual components that you have within the responsive search ad to show dynamically, which is fine, except it's really hard to see actual performance differences in those different components because Google does not make it easy to see performance differences. So again, one responsive search ad is the only number that I would look at and say, this might not be the right number that we need to have in here, but two or three, because again, three is the max, are going to be just fine by me. Next, I want to understand how many of the components they're using in each of the responsive search ads. For this, let's just focus on this brand campaign because there are some good examples here. So the first version that we've got here, it's using all 15 headlines, it's using all four descriptions, and we can see that there are some pins in here. Second variant, we can see again, we're using all of the different headlines and all of the descriptions, but no pins. And then third, we're using eight headlines, still four descriptions, and again, no pins on this one. So at this point, I like that two of them are using all of the headlines and description positions available, but you don't have to do that. In this instance, I might say that if you have other headlines available to fill out positions nine through 15 on this ad variant that I'm highlighted on right now. But again, you don't have to do that because there are three responsive search ads active. And at some point, you probably do run out of ideas for different headlines. Now, there's not an example in this account, but let's say that somebody had a responsive search ad and they only had three headlines and two descriptions. That tells me that they have a strategy behind it where they want to effectively recreate expanded text ads. And just like anything else, that's not necessarily wrong. Google just prefers that you give them more variants to work with. And in my experience, if you lock down all three of your responsive search ads as expanded text ad variants, Google will effectively throttle the number of impressions you can get because it doesn't like that you're not giving it very many options. So if we were to see that in here, I might call that out, but don't really have that issue now. And the next thing I want to look at is if we're pinning any components in place. As we said, for this variant, we're not. For the second variant, no pins. For the first one, we do have some pins. Both headline one and headline two are pinned in position one. You can see it right below here. This is how you would review it in Google Ads Editor. In the Google Ads interface, it'll be in the same line as the text. There'll be a blue pin icon off to the right, and it'll tell you the number of the position that it's pinned, either one, two, or three. Now for this instance, we have two assets pinned in position one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, keep scrolling, eight pinned into position two. And then looks like the remainder are going to be split into position three. Overall, this is not a bad strategy. Each of these different assets is going to find its way into either position one, two, or three. And we've got some variance across the board here. We only have two assets pinned into position one, but that's not necessarily a problem if they really want to make sure that those messages are what show up in that location. Now, if I adjust this really quick and we have the pins that look like this, where one headline is pinned in position one, one headline is pinned in position two, and one headline is pinned in position three, and none of the others are pinned, this is where I'm going to start to have a problem because it doesn't make sense because none of these other headlines, two, then five through 15 are going to show up at all because these three headlines that are pinned in place are the ones that are going to show and nothing else is going to be rotated in. If you are going to pin different assets into a specific location, make sure that all the assets you want to show up in that location are also pinned there or don't pin anything at all. Whenever you have something pinned in any location and then something that is not pinned, that means that that second headline in this example will never show up in position one. It just can't because that other asset is pinned there. This happens pretty often where people will put together some sort of ads and then they think, I want this one to show here, this one to show here, and this one to show someplace else. But they don't fully understand how assets get pinned into locations and what that means for the other assets. So this is definitely something I would call out if I saw a pinned strategy that looks like this. But as I mentioned earlier, the original pin settings were everything was pinned, multiple assets were pinned into the same locations, all looked just fine to me. Now, as I'm going through and understanding what the pin strategy is, I'm also going to read the actual headlines as we're going down here. 
and descriptions as well, but just for sake of video and me not needing to scroll too much, we'll just leave it on the headlines. As we can see, we've got the brand name in position one. This originally was pinned into position one, so better quality tenants could also show up there. That's fine by me. Tenant screening, midterm rental platform, 30 day plus stays, no commissions, talks about the number of traveler searches per year, keep 100% of your rent. It seems like we're doing a little bit of brand messaging, talking about some of the benefits, talking about the overall platform itself and what it does. But then even though I said we're not gonna scroll, if I come down here a little bit, you can see that headlines 11, 12, 13, and 15 are effectively different versions of a call to action. So we've got some benefit statements, some feature statements, calls to action, a brand message. All this is good to me. We don't need to have all of those assets included in a different ad variant, but it is important to make sure that they are having some sort of variance and that these can be compelling. If we look at some of the other messaging in here, again, have a few different things. We've got, you know, a trust symbol in terms of how long they've been around. Still some pretty similar messaging across the board. No booking fees ever. That's good. Again, more traveler searches. Lots of different features that they're calling out. They still got the brand message up at the top here. They've got the brand name all the way down in headline seven, which isn't necessarily a problem. Personally, I like to put it at the top just so I know what's going on. But again, it'll get rotated in with the same frequency that all these other ones will with this variant because there's nothing pinned. But then you can still see all the different messaging that they've got here. This is where things are really subjective. All this looks fine to me. At this point, I wouldn't make any recommendations really about taking any of this messaging out. It all seems reasonable. It all could perform pretty well. Instead, what I would do for the deliverable of the audit, I would put together a bunch of different headlines and descriptions that I can come up with based on what's in here, based on what's on the website, based on what competitors are doing, and just suggest to them what they might wanna test in the campaigns moving forward. I would also probably call out the responsive search ad templates that we've talked about in the past and suggest maybe testing those overall. As we can see, they do test in this account because there are different ad variants active. There are some that have been active in the past but are now paused. So I'd put together some suggestions of how they could use their testing strategy moving forward to continue finding the messaging that works best. Now in that vein, the last thing I would do is check the change history logs and see how frequently ads are getting changed out just to see if they're testing with a relatively high frequency or low frequency and then make a suggestion based on that. If they're not turning things over every few months, this account specifically has a decent amount of volume. I'd probably suggest that they need to test at a little bit higher cadence. But if this account had lower volume and we see an ad variant maybe get changed out once a quarter, once every other quarter, that's okay if the volume supports it. As I've mentioned before, with ad copy, it's hard for things to necessarily be wrong, but we're looking to make sure that the ads and the ad strategy in the account are set up to help the campaign succeed. So whether it's reviewing the expanded text ads, the responsive search ads and the pinning strategy, or just the overall testing cadence. We're just looking to make sure that the account is being managed in such a way that can help them hit their performance goals. That's all for now with what we look at with ad copy strategy, but tune in next time as we talk about our ad asset review strategy in the paid search audit series. If you have any questions about this video or anything else in this audit series, leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.